Hello, I'm David Eichels with David Richard Gallery, located in New York City, and today I'm speaking with Laura Watt. Uh, we're standing in the gallery with her first solo show uh, with the gallery um, called Hide and Seek, and we're looking at two different bodies of work. Um, the Open Ceiling series, which was in an earlier segment um, on one side of the room, and on this side of the room are the Hide series, um, and we're, uh, there are six paintings in this series, so um, we're going to continue with our discussion on the heights. So we're now looking at the front half of the exhibition, and there's three paintings here. And um, so picking up on our conversation, we had just sort of uncovered um, that these grids um, just to refresh people's memory, was t for you to really focus sort of on mark making and, 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 and sort of a long stroke. Yes, and the, and the process and re yeah, yeah, really having and that full arm gestural. And so what I'm mark curious about here is these start, the one that you're standing uh, next to, yes. uh, with the yellow with the large over red overlay, that was sort of the beginning of this change. And you can see a bit of a change here where the gestures are still long, and they're still arcing, and they're, they're layered. Um, and you can see that there's this sort of rotational aspect, like you said, is your process. Um, but there is something different happening in that painting. Uh, one is you've gone in in some of the negative spaces and voids. You've filled in with a yet another net or grid of work. Um, but they're also, more importantly, I think the more important thing is you are not just terminating the line or having it go off the edge, uh, many of those recoil back on themselves and return. And that is, then becomes a much more pronounced element in this orange painting. Yes. And <clears throat> even still, but it changes a bit more in a more reductive way. I think, come to me, is this one, the blue? Um, the blue? Uh, Dawn Dread. Uh, Dawn this Dread. one's come to me. Come yeah. to me. Um, which, now this becomes almost like an object centrally located, you know, which is, it, but with the return. So I mean, the, all the elements are still the same. Right. It's a series of grids that are rotated. Um, but, uh, and it, th these last three all have these returns. Right, right. But um, the, what's different is you didn't really play up the return so much in the, uh, the, Dawn uh, Dread. Dawn yeah. Dread. So, um, and it's sort of, we're seeing between both of these series something happening that is now in your current body of work. And so uh, that's what I'm kind of curious about is the trajectory and wh how you decided to do that return. <clears throat> and was it simply uh, to continue with sort of a process where to see what it would reveal? Or was it intentional for some other reason? Hmm. Okay. You um, don't know. Yeah, no, I'm not <laughs> sure how. Well, they started forming in the earlier ones just by the mark making. You can start to see these, oh. the loop backs here. Gotcha. And then just as I in, um, <coughs> became more familiar um, that, you know, I started to emphasize and really liked that loop and um, it became a, a more articulated. And it, then I started to see it as a way because, you know, there, there actually were two other Hyde paintings that are in a private collection that were with this group. Um, and you, so you've done, I've done a certain amount of them. I'm, I, you get kind of where am I going to go? Right. Am I going to just keep repeating? So I started to look at, this seemed like a way to get out and was this, you know, kind of elegant form. Um, but this, uh, I'm using this painting, it's a little confusing because um, I had started this, but then I th went on to the larger. I wanted to see it in a larger scale and I really wanted to, to pull out that seed pod and, and have it be a much more, um, really inform the painting much mm -hmm. more and start to, to change what we were talking about. Yeah, because these two paintings here, uh, the way they're hung, uh, it's not obvious to people and also the distance from these others, but these last two here, the orange painting, come to me and 
Don Dread, the one with the blue overlay, yeah. uh, are bigger. Yeah. There's 44 by 77, and all the others were 36 by 72. Yeah. And they, you know, so the, and the scale jump was to see if they'd hold um, at, a, at a larger scale. And then with the larger scale, I also got interested in a real strong color. Mm -hmm. um, statement, you know, singular color statement with these. Uh, okay. So things, I mean, it's funny because, uh, sorry, the, yep. the change in scale did change it a bit. It became more about color to me. I, I, I realized I didn't want to just do another hide painting on a larger scale. So I, so in the orange, it was definitely, was how to get these the pods, those new shapes in there. Yeah, these. Yeah. yeah. And, and there's, a, there's a tying up aspect to these last three, a knotting, you know, what mm -hmm. they, ju they get tighter and more forms. And this one, it, I really, I was like, okay, well, I just painted a knot, you know, in the blue. In the blue. Um, here we really, and I, the other thing that's interesting to me, because this was also a way using the seed pods and, and how I really left these two original Mars, con, yeah, yeah. Uh, half circles. Mm -hmm. There's a nice way that that starts, that one's a little more expansive. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it, I think I see these kind of as partners, you know, in opposition. The blue is really becomes that one wadded ball of grid and this it starts to see ways outside with these seed pods, which gets into, you know, there's, there is all of this kind of cliched metaphoric language that deals with nature and biological structures mm -hmm. and psychological that I, I really, I, I love kind of using as I work on the paintings because they're both so cheap, you know, it's throwaway language and also very, you know, it's true. You know, or not true is not the right thing, but it is also kind of what we're dealing with here. Yeah, and these are the, these, these are the only ones that also are modeled. Yeah. So it, it's hard to probably see in the video, but um, these, the interior of these pods are, everything else is relatively flat. Yeah. And, um, you know, dynamic, but flat in terms of there's no modeling. These are just straight lines. <clears throat> and in here, you're actually modeling it to give it some dimensionality, mm -hmm. as opposed to an illusory sort of dimensionality. Yeah, but, yeah. So, um, it, which is really, it's, it's that kind of new, yeah. really shows like new, new things coming in, new interests. Exactly. Yeah. Which we see more of in, yeah. in the other paintings that, that have come after this. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, these two. They work so well partly because of the color, but yet there are differences between them, you know, because of the, 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 the complementary nature of the colors and what have you. But, um, but they also just have this sort of interesting dialogue, um, you know, these, with these, that one being sort of internally sort mm -hmm. of as it becomes an object in and of itself. And what's really weird is now these become objects sort of on the perimeter <coughs> coming out yeah, of it. Yeah, kind so, of popping out and, yeah. So they, they almost sort of are <coughs> complements to each other in many ways. Um, and did, is this the last one of this series? It, well, it, it was, and then I went back and finished this uh, one. Okay. Um, and, oh, that's right, and, and you said Or kind of destructed and then rebuilt this one. Yeah. Because I wasn't, when you saw it, I wasn't sure it was done. And actually all I did was go back and... Um, irritate the surface some. <laughs> yeah, because what's, uh, what I'm trying to figure out is the reason why I'm zooming in on it is, um, was this done over another painting or did you actually go in and fill in? No, that's, I mean, that's underwork, the smaller grid, it's all underwork, uh, but it was all done in the service of, it, it wasn't of a this. painting that, yeah, that was finished. Gotcha. It, um, because right, so at one point, I think you know, with here, you, I was thinking that maybe I could do something new with this idea if I went back to a really small grid, and mm -hmm. then I just went, play, you know, it, so. Yeah, no, I mean, it's, it's sort of an interesting launch pad into something that's different that now 
you know, is in the newer paintings. Yes, yeah. because the one thing I, I loved lots of things in this, but I also remember kind of, and I, I did the, the darker one after, because as much as I, the color, the vibrancy, the, I, I mean, I love the color in that. Like mm -hmm. just, it's, it's so strong and just the pastels work really well. They have a, a nice, weight that pastel doesn't usually have mm -hmm. in, in terms of um, color. Well, but, because of the vibrancy of that orange. Yeah. but um, And also the fact that it's solid. Yeah. Um, all your other grounds are very mottled mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and brushy and painterly mm -hmm. and almost sort of stained. Yeah. yeah. Whereas this is a bold yeah. ground that, uh, which is interesting, it's not acting as a ground because of the, the heat of it. It's, it's, it's popping pulling it forward. Up. Yeah. And I kind of had cornered myself in terms of like I felt after yeah. I'd finished that because I, I wasn't sure how to move out of that. I knew there right. were a lot of things I liked and I knew it was a solid finished painting, but I'm like, hmm, well, how do I get? Well, bizarre is the same thing's happening here. Normally blue is not a, a, a pull color, yeah. <laughs> it's a push color. Yeah. And so this pulling forward, you know, that, br that blue, uh, but there's really not a lot of other warmth in this. I mean, there is with this uh, sort of, there's a little bit of ochre here. Yeah. It's but. sort of a muddied up color, which is why it's very neutralized. So it's sort of receding, even though it's warmer, but that blue is what's really coming forward. Yeah. And yeah. especially an image. So yeah. yeah, these both are, they're sort of a contrast that's working in opposite of what's we normally think. They, they are, and they, yeah. With they, color, I mean. Yeah, yeah, no, it's, it's, I hadn't really thought, but there is, and there is that kind of finality to them, like this process has been finished up. So I think then when going there, I just, I had to be, you know, I had to just right. de destroy it a bit to, to, <laughs> get, to open it up. Um, and that's when, you know, we were um, in the press release speaking about kind of cartooning stuff. Yes. To when I, what I mean is, is something like this, to then kind of make that, that top um, red, pink uh, grid look, you know, it looks carto a bit cartoony, the fact that I've painted the, the shadow in, and it just right. becomes more signy, you yeah. know, and not... It, it it's, just, it's more re ref referential. Yeah. Yeah. Is is also kind of I think what my cartoon when I say cartoony I also mean referential and a uh, poppy you know a poppy uh, resolution to to how it's going to look. Yeah, I mean that one's just got a, a lot of odd things about it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but it's um, the because everything else is I mean like that the other grid is very neutralized. Yeah. And, uh, but yeah, the red is definitely pronounced and on top and also just feels like, uh, like, like a lot of lassos and loops. And so it is sort of a, like a roundup or something yeah. uh, going on. But actually now that I'm looking at it, I see the pink one. See the pink one just sort of fades away in that. Yeah. Um, there is a pink that's also outlined in blue. Yeah, yeah, this, you, they, are you, this yeah. pink, yeah. Yeah, there's a lot different about that one, but it still it holds with these. I mean, you yeah. see the process and everything, but you see you're sort of busting out and trying to figure something else mm -hmm. out here, and um, and I think then by this sort of it's sort of interesting that this has become like the terminus of this because <laughs> it's now self-contained. Yeah, it's, yeah, you know, it's, yeah, yeah, and, yeah uh, exactly. So you sort of resolve the series in in your own mind, but a lot of this. Um, you know, um, a lot of these sort of techniques and things you're, I'm, I'm definitely seeing deployed in some of these, uh, the next series of paintings um, is where you picked up on a few of these, uh, like with the radiation, the radiating, right, you know, right. sort of um, like star-like shape or yeah. whatever. And, and um, they come in and they, yeah, the, um, the painting that's out up front by the desk mm -hmm. and this painting behind you very much use, I, I refer to it in the studio as a vector system, you know, or these yeah. emanations and they yeah. um, kind of, yeah, to me are like little spot towers. So you kind of have these points where you can fi refer to yourself in these, la the, well, if we call them landscapes or paintings right. where the perspective and where you are on ground starts to get less and less, um, you're less and less assured. Right. Of, uh, even though you feel the landscape reference, I feel like there's less and less 
landscape reference for you to find your footing on. You know, you know it's landscape, yeah. but it, you're off kilter. Well, they seem more cellular to me. They so are, well, yeah. They, it's, it's almost like they're more microcosmic as opposed to macro, whereas the hides seem more macro. <clears throat> I agree with that, I, oh, but I also like that the hides don't play that game so much because mm -hmm. I do that micro macro yeah. more than, you know, I mean, yeah. it's so much. It's all inherent in geom a lot of geometry, geometric yeah. anyway. No, these but, are staying to the higher ground because yeah. you set rules or parameters. Yeah, and are just like, this is what we're doing. Yeah. You and know, rather, is, I mean, I've, I'm intrigued by the micro macro, but I... But, I, you know, I think sometimes, though, it's good um, with an artist, especially when you either you operate in a different, a lot of different media and you do your, or um, scales of work and then you, your presentations are, <clears throat> are complex and, and almost like become installation like. So I think sometimes it's good to do shows like this or bodies of work like this and present them this way because it, um, it's almost like sometimes a resetting. Mm -hmm. It's sort of like, um, you know, you, you sort of cleaned up the toolbox and cleaned off your desk. You're starting, you know. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and, uh, and got rid of all the other residue and you're sort of focused on something. And so it's sometimes I think it, it really is good because to have these, because it helps, um, you know, as an art historian and somebody who likes to write about art, it helps a lot of times to have like a, a launch pad or a grounding for a whole nother sort of aspect of somebody's work. Mm -hmm. But sometimes, unless you can kind of isolate it and sort of deconstruct it and talk about it, like where's this coming from, you know, yeah. what have you, like we just talked about with the processing, process side of, the, of your work, which I never thought about before, because yeah. these other paintings don't look like process right, paintings. Right, right. Because there's not that regimentation or system yeah. that you can figure out that, oh, there's right, a you system. Can't see, yeah, you can't see yeah. it in, in, in the, see it as easily, but. Yeah. But I think, uh, and the same thing with the op art, uh, the, uh, the more optical sort of approaches to or, or purposefully uh, being illusory and using different devices. Um, I think, you know, in the open uh, ceiling paintings, I think what that does is when you do it in isolation <coughs> or in a, a discrete body of work, um, which is why I'm really glad we're documenting these as exhibitions in, in a catalog right, and everything, right. because then they become <coughs> really good fodder for people to look at your other work and understand sort of how they relate. I mean, your work to me all seems related, but I can, couldn't ever put my finger on it, you know? And I think this has really helped me kind of think about, you know, where different elements and things come from. I'm, I'm already befuddled with the new ones <laughs> that you're only <laughs> three months into, but, uh, <laughs> you know, so. <laughs> but I, I do see where some things are coming yeah. from. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah. But they already have this sort of, um, what I, it's something that I kind of think of as, um, I don't know how to say. It. It's just these paintings just anymore, I love it when people do this, this new op opulent sort of bigger than life sort of painting where, um, you know, it's, 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 it's big, it's grand, right, right, and there's a, a lot happening, and you're trying to figure out. I know it's happening, but I don't know what's happening. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so yeah. It's like when you hear, you know, a new type of music, and you're going, "I like it, but I don't understand it. I yeah. need to, I need to compartmentalize it in my mind." <laughs> yes, you know, yes. and that's what the art historians always try to do is we can yeah. try to figure out, okay, where does this fit, you know? And so, but I always like that because it's something that you have to sort of like reckon with. It's something you have to like kind of, I have to think about this now, yeah. you know, and I have yeah. to ponder it and I have to like really look at it and, and you know, and, and really, you know, think about it as opposed to like going, oh, that looks like that, you know, you know what I mean? Yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, I sort no, of like I'm... it when these new, when people have this new way of expressing themselves yeah. and doing things because you are trying to figure out, it's like, I can't place this. I haven't seen anything yeah, like this. Yeah. It reminds me of this. It gives me this emotional feeling or whatever, but I'm not placing it, yeah. you know? And that's what I kind of like is it now create, creates this challenge to start seeing, well, what are the threads? What's common? Right, right. What, what's, what's emerging out of this, you know, consistently? Mm -hmm. And how much of this is autonomic and how much, much of it's deliberate, yeah. you know? And yeah. Well, I, I think that's, that's what's so nice um, for me with this show, too, is, I mean, I've always been an, interested in complexity. Mm -hmm. That kind of goes with micro and macro interest, yeah. too. And, 
but um, a little bit of chaos. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. But the one thing that I, what I started, and what you can see in these two bodies is a certain point that I realized I really had to start to break things apart mm -hmm. and see how each component, like how I could really play with that, make sure I knew my tool, how to use my tools, and that these two are such perfect examples of yeah. that. Is um, and it was a big learning curve for me to realize that I could make a painting like that and it would say enough, yeah. you know, that I didn't have to. But in, in doing this work and seeing this work with a piece like the piece from the summer, yeah, I think it really helps understand what I'm trying to achieve, the right. level of complexity yeah. in terms of language. And, and I also, I'm, I, I would consider myself a pretty good um, student of art history, so I... I'm not hiding any of that, mm -hmm. you know, I, it's, I hope you can check, you know, all the points that I've stopped. Right. It's a, that's a fun way to, too, mm -hmm. but it's definitely about complexity and synthesis and a kind of an expansive yeah. understanding of abstract languages but rather than a more... What's good though is you've given us now, a t these, these paintings are like tools <clears throat> that um, are singularly focused that help us understand sort of like where all this exuberance, you know, emanates from, where does it come from? Mm. And that's sort of how I think of like your, you know, these other bodies of work that yeah. you have. They're so exuberant and over the top, there's so much going on, but yet there's something inherently just that pulls you in, you know? And yeah. I always, you know, we're, we are in a visual, you know, world. And, and so uh, I always like that when um, you can't necessarily explain it, but I know I like looking at it, <laughs> you yeah, know? Yeah. And I mean, I think that's what's, what's really yeah. great. I mean, that's what we're all looking for. And I think, you know, artists, you know, um, process helps us do these things, you know, because um, it's where these sort of like new ideas or images come out of and you're thinking, oh, that's how I did that. Mm -hmm, you know, or mm -hmm. that's how I get to that. Because Stephen Pusey, um, I don't know if you know him or not, but he was the show before you in this space. He and I were talking about that, we were wrapping up the show and stuff. Um, and he was recounting an ex uh, a discussion he'd have with somebody, I forget who it was now, but anyway. Um, oh, it was another artist, I guess, and they were sort of frustrated with feeling like they were stuck right. with their work, and he says, you know what, he says, it's just, you know, I forget how he worded it, I'm just paraphrasing, but he says something like, you gotta blow up your own paintings sometimes to figure out, you know, wh where to go, yeah. or how you yeah. got there and how you fix it, you know, he's a, it's just paint, it's just a canvas. You know, and he layers and layers and right. layers, and a yeah. lot of his does comes comes out of sort of like chaos and chaos theory, and the things emerge out of it, and then he just runs with it when he likes what he yeah. sees. And so I think you know that's an interesting point. Um, you sort of did that in a way. You sort of blew things up and just started like with the or just focused yourself on these basics, and you sort of you know you resolved it to the point where you're like, okay, I'm done here, and that's your kind of like, you know, business as usual, but yet you know now what your toolkit has in it. Right. So in a way, you sort of blew things up a little bit, you know, yeah. did something a little bit different, but now you're kind of, they're moving back to how I think of your paintings. Yes. And, um, and I just sort of see these in your canon you know, you yeah. know, of work. Yeah, and I'm sure, you know, there'll be, like, even looking at this, you know, I see ways to, mm -hmm. to kind of go back in yeah. to that in a, in, with different things. So, I mean, the work always kind of, ebb, you know, I think that's what moves Stephen that way. Was, but is, you know, you, you just, you got to figure out how yeah. to sort of blow up your own painting yeah. to figure out how to fix it, to know what tools to use, yeah, yeah. you know, to work your way back Ab in, <clears throat> or how to resolve it, or, or, or add something different to it. Yes. And like he said, he, you just can't be afraid, you know, it's paint, you know, and you can... Yeah, you, know, you can it, scrape it off, you can yeah, paint you can over, it, paint it, over it, it, you can and, stomp on but it. I, I, but you he reminded me of him when you were talking about sort yeah. of your, your process and now kind of where you're going, and uh, no, I think it's actually very important. Um, I think it's... Um, it's always interesting to hear artists yeah. sort of as you're embarking on different bodies of work. But the thing is, you always have so much going on. So it's like this new painting that you posted the other day yes. was very yeah. different than these. Right. But yet I'm seeing how it relates to other yeah. things. But it's like you you have series, but you you work on them in parallel. I, I do. I like I'll have like um, I might have I've like these small um, I call them my peanuts, but my little small horizontals. <laughs> And I've started using those because those I use really kind of for new ideas, going through like 
formal questions, you know, the one that's got kind of almost, we were calling wheat yeah, in wheat. the studio, yeah, like wheat. you know, that kind of patterning across. So I'll have bodies of work that I'm doing that are really kind of formal explorations. I might have a group like this going where I'm like square, six squares, you know, the square is going to be turned, grid, and then, and then I'll also have maybe three larger paintings mm. that are, are much more traveling. I travel through them, you know, yeah. and they, they well, it's accumulate. Well, like the ones that you refer to as architecture, yeah, yeah which are yeah. very different. They're very different, and they, they're... Well, they're, sort of, kind of, now that we've yeah, looked at things and sort of... Yeah, but there's, they're more narrative to me. Yeah. I mean, that's how I read them. They're, to me, they're, they're, they're much more kind of, yeah, narrative ex explorations. They've got, or they've got a longer story time, or time in them, actually, is mm -hmm. more what it's about. I think, um these paintings that don't fit neatly into, see, into a series or a body, they have a different sense of time. Mm -hmm. um, and they're about kind of exploring things through time differently in a painting. That's a good point. Yeah, and then these are, you know, but, but these two, they just taught me so much about the usefulness of, uh, of saying, okay, this, I'm gonna just, this is just gonna be about process. This is, these are the rules of engagement with this group. Because there's nothing better than finding yourself kind of in that corner and saying, how do I get out? Yeah. What, what do I have? That's, yeah. that's new invention. And that's really what, one of the things we're looking for. Well, it's like for. you always refer to yourself as sort of new spaces. Yeah, and, yeah. And, uh, <clears throat> and using patterning yeah. and, and sort of, that's sort of like your go-to sort of toolkit. It to, is, and it's uh, kind of my, it's the easy language that falls, but it really is. I yeah. keep, you know, I mean, there's been so many times where I think, Oh, I cannot paint another grid, you know. And then it, the process Whoop, does. There it is. Yep, there it is. There, <laughs> just like doing dishes, we can do it again, <laughs> and it can be a new experience. <laughs> so you know, and you find, yeah. you just you dig up the ground again. Rub yeah. on, rub <laughs> off. <laughs> you gotta get it into zen, zen space. Well, we're going to segue then to just we've tintillated people now with talking about these newest ones. So just hang tight and we're going to okay. take a quick look at those and uh, for the last little segment. Great.